before I start, I wanted to show a couple things that I've changed. Um, one of the things I found was that um, because the space is so big here, the cartridge kind of bounces around and tilts. And so um, when it comes over to the annealing station, sometimes it's not centered and you don't get a great rotation. So what I did is I created these, these little inserts and that tighten up to the dimension of the cartridge or the diameter of the cartridge, it tightens it up. It, the only problem is I haven't figured out the feed mechanism yet for, for these inserts. Um, I have about 10 different ideas and I just haven't had time to work on it. So when I use the inserts, I'm pretty much doing everything by hand as far as uh, feeding the machine. But you can see the, the rotation tends to be much better as far as the, the brass cases, you get a more consistent rotation while using those inserts, which is uh, ultimately you wanna have the most consistency possible on your uh, annealed brass. That's why we do it. So a couple more notes. This is controlled uh, with a power supply here. And it has a standard you know, connector and I've added an on off switch, which will shut the power from the device. Okay, so now I'm gonna take it apart and hopefully that will give you an idea of how it's all put together. So first of all, uh, right now there's, there's an FTD-232, which is the programming unit for um, the Arduino Mini Pro. And that's attached so that I can add new code. But uh, there's a, a pin connector underneath this and we'll show. Uh, that if you're wondering why it's hanging out, uh, that's because I was doing some programming on it. All right, so first I'm gonna remove the feeding mechanism. Next, I will go ahead and take the uh, disc off. That has all the inserts in it. So you'll see uh, this is like a lazy Susan bearing and it just floats. I considered pinning it down, but ended up really not needing to. It's a little easier to leave it floating. It really is just to support the, the diameter of the disc. You can see some wear in the paint where the cartridges have, have fallen and then they're rubbing a little bit. The Cerakote's pretty strong, but that's probably after about 3,000 pieces that I've annealed. So not too bad on the wear. Then I need to take the torches so this mechanism it's really just a piece of a aluminum rod that I'd threaded and um, shaped a little bit and I took some square I think this one by one square stock drilled cut it and then threaded through Then these are just, um, I kind of created some makeshift uh, nuts to use. This was a version one, well, I mean, I had a few wooden prototypes before, but first metal version, uh, there, there's definitely a lot of room for improvement on this design. 
but uh, I'm pretty happy with it as a version one. Okay. I think I'll take the face plate off next. Well, you know, I think I'm going to turn it upside down and give you a look underneath it first. Okay. So, so what we have, this is the side where the connector comes through, the power connector. This is our 360 servo, and it's mounted to a, an aluminum uh, bracket, and it has space that allows me to sort of center that piece um, in, into the, into the faceplate. And then this is the TB6600 controller, and then our, our stepper motor, our high torque stepper, and a voltage controller underneath that. So, I don't know that I'm going to take it all apart, but I will show you some of the interesting things here. Okay. So, let's see if we can get a good look at that. I've written on there with a pin, but just to see that, I, that I've centered everything, but here's the controller how it mounts into the plate and then these are extra large so that I can kind of wiggle this around so it's perfectly centered in the hole here and then this is a friction fit actually I use some Teflon tape um, just to make it tighter because this is actually I want to buy get a better 360 servo this one has a plastic shaft and they have some with a brass that seems to be better but, you know, I've done a few thousand rounds in this thing. It seems to work. And it hasn't heated up to the point where it's slipping or anything like that. So, I guess if it if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Uh, I don't know if there's any value in actually taking the motor off. But let me, let me let's talk about how the motor is connected to the, to the uh, plate. So, this is a coupler. That I had bought and I had to re-drill, I had to drill and tap it for my hole size and for my screw size. But it's a, I believe a 10 millimeter coupler. And it's just slipped over the uh, stepper motor shaft and then I it just used, it already had the, the set screws in the sides. So that can be, I actually made the hole big enough so the whole thing can come out. But I'm going to leave that there for now. I don't think there's much value in taking it out right now. So as far as connectors go, so we have our voltage coming in. It's split so that we send the, the higher voltage straight to the controller, the motor controller. And then from here, we also split it off to the five volt converter. And this is what feeds the Arduino. So this is the guts of the electronics. And I'm going to take this out and we can look at it in a much better way. But um, I probably will, <laughs> if I did another design, make, make these triangle pieces maybe bigger and, and build a faceplate to kind of contain that better. So everything is connected. I tried to build connectors for everything. So at the back of the faceplate, here's my two switches and then my LCD screen. And it has an IC2 
or I2C um, control module built on it, and then my encoder knob. So these all have pins, pin connectors. So I end up with some stuff like this. The brains of the operation, I think I'm going to have to get a smaller screwdriver. This is the controlling piece for, for the USB programming. You don't need that. And then these all connect out to the various pieces. And then finally we have um, a power module here or the the power connector so this is the actual arduino pro this element here can be quickly replaced let's see if i can get that into focus so the arduino pro i actually um, soldered the the pins on there and if i can get this off i'll show you So I created a control board that has a harness for my Arduino Pro and then has all the pin connectors. Now, unfortunately, uh, you're not going to be able to see the wiring, but I gave the wiring schematic in the, in the Git project. So really what I did is kind of the old school way of, uh, of just wiring each of these pins to their their connectors and then I hot glued a piece of plastic onto the back to kind of shield everything once I was done. So that kind of, once I've put my Arduino trip uh, chip on there, um, that's the kind of the, the brains of the operation. The only other thing um, I would say somewhat important is setting up the control unit, the stepper control unit. I've got this one set up for 130 second steps um, with the max voltage that it will take. Now these guys will disconnect so it makes it fairly easy to take apart. And I think that's about it. This actually, this particular design, not, not great. I think I would do it differently if I did another one. Um, but I had just built, I just created some blocks. Let me take one of these off so you can get an idea. But it's really just a simple, um, kind of like a connecting block. And I guess if there was any part that needed to be precise, um, this one can be frustrating if you don't get the holes perfect. Oh, so there's, there's actually three points of connection. So finally, this top point. So I didn't bother painting it, but it has threaded holes. So I made four of these that were virtually, well, they weren't identical. There's two, mir two mirrored sets. Okay, the last thing I'm going to talk about is how I made the plate. So there's lots of methods for finding the, the center of a plate. Um, you can draw pretty much three intersects and, and get there. Um, you can create lines that, you know, have an even distance and then take a parallel from those lines to find the center. So any three lines, if you have an exact parallel or exact perpendicular, you'll find the center of your plate. Um, 
It doesn't really matter the method, just find the one that gets you to the closest center possible. And then what I did is I drilled a hole that was exactly the size of, of, of my bolt. I don't remember which bolt size I used. I think it was, um, I, don't, I don't remember. I think it was seven millimeter, but um, I once I got that bolt in there, I connected and, I fit, and it was fairly centered. I tightened it down with a nut and then added, connected that whole thing into um, a rotary table with a chuck. And so that got me pretty much onto a, a, a base where I could spin the rotary table. And then all I have to do is understand the degrees of separation between my holes. So in my case, I had eight holes, divide 360 by eight, and you end up with 45 degrees. I put a, um, I put a pilot bit into the mill here. Just a, I think that's a quarter inch. And then brought this guy in about an inch. Well, exactly an inch. I, I, uh, it doesn't really matter if you're consistent to the outside. The chances are your hole isn't going to be perfectly in the center. Um, so you really want to be a consistent distance from the center to here. And if you've centered, if, if, you're, if your rotary table and your chuck are centered, and this is mounted, you know, centered into that table, then as we turn, we're going to be um, in a circle. All of our eight holes are going to be on the same uh, radius, uh, circumference, I guess, or <laughs> I don't know. The, out, the, uh, the distance from the outside edge isn't as important as making sure that those holes are equal distance from the center that you're rotating on. So at this case, I was, I was an inch from the outside, but I trued up my outside edge. So I actually put a milling bit and ran it against the outside edge of this until I had a contact all the way around and then came in an inch and drilled, spotted each of my locations. And now I figure out the degrees just by using the rotary table. Um, let's see if we can show that. So the rotary table will have the degrees on it. And as you rotate the table, you just need to go to 45 degrees each time. So once I had the, the um, spot holes or the pilot holes, then I can come back, lay the, lay the plate, uh, flat piece of plywood or um, directly here and, and drill really nice holes. Um, I drilled them as half an inch for starts. That's a little bit big, and that's why I ended up having to make the inserts. I think um, this plate, when I when I do it, I will probably do uh, closer to the insert size, which is probably 20, 30 thousandths, maybe 50 thousandths over the cartridge size for the 308, which is generally everything I load is, is that size and smaller. Okay, I know that was a long video, but hopefully it was informative and uh, you learned something about the, the process that I went through to make this thing. If you got any questions, put them in the comments, let me know. I'm happy to answer them. And it uh, looks like I have a, an annealing machine to put back together. Cheers.